Hello, everyone, and welcome to another session of the Sales Level Up series. Uh, my name is Ken McKnight, and I'm a solutions architect here at GitLab. And today we'll be covering reference architectures. So before we start, let's go over a few terms here that we'll be, you'll hear several times during the presentation. So the first is HA, or high availability. Um, the second is GEO. And the third is RPS, which is requests per second. All right, so how do you respond when your customer says something like this? So I've got this uh, 4,500 users across three sites, and I definitely want my system to be highly available and have great performance for all my teams at all my locations. Can you tell me how many hosts I will need to support this architecture? So a great question, right? And here's how we're gonna answer that. First, we're gonna review uh, the GitLab architecture. And then we're going to identify um, which reference architecture makes most sense. And the three requirements we're going to look at mainly are user count, HA or high availability, and whether they need geo. And then lastly, we're going to drill down to view the specific configuration. OK, so let's start with um, a simplified component overview. This is basically what uh, the GitLab uh, server application architecture looks like. It has eight or nine components, and it's good to review this with the customer so they get a general overview of what's going on. Now, if they ask more detailed questions, you can simply scroll down to the component diagram. This adds a lot more detail to the connectivity between all the pieces. You can see all the different ports that connect it and all the different components at a much more uh, detailed level. Now, so let's say, for instance, that they're curious about a particular, um, a particular component. So what we can do, let's say, for instance, we want to look at Prometheus. All right, so what does Prometheus do, and, and uh, how does it fit in? Well, if you look on the right side here in this menu, you can see details. And if we look down, there we are, we have uh, Prometheus, a link to it. So if we go over to that link, then we can see um, the project page for Prometheus, um, how it's configured, what layer it's in, um, and more details can be found at the website. But this basically tells us what Prometheus is, and it's basically uh, a way to help admins uh, expose metrics uh, within their system. So perfect. It helps us with, and, and you can see that on the right there, every single component is described. So that's how you can get that extra information. All right. So now that we've gone over briefly um, where you can discuss with your customer the overall architecture uh, of GitLab, as well as uh, the detailed uh, bits for each component, let's talk about reference architecture. So why do we need this? Well, so GitLab server um, can be scaled up to handle many users. And as this chart shows, you can see that we um, can start basically down here near the bottom at zero. And then we have reference architectures that hit 1,000 users 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 25,000, and 50,000. And the reason why the, we do this is to provide the configurations that make the most sense for our customers. How did we get all this information? Well, we actually, the quality team actually wrote a, um, a uh, performance tool right here. And you can click into it, it's open source, and we'll discuss it a little further in a, a blog post that I'd like to, to uh, point out, but for now, um, just know that um, we have a performance tool and that's how we're able to get these numbers. If you recall, we talked about requests per second. And so um, every endpoint, every place that we want to test has some metrics behind it. And so you'll see that as we uh, look at uh, the different configurations. Now, if you recall, our customer had asked us about 4,500 users. So let's take a look here. Here are the reference architectures. So 4,500 users fall somewhere between 3,000 and 5,000. Let's assume that we want to have a little bit of room to be able to expand from 4,500 to possibly 5,000. So let's select that one. All righty. So now when we drop into this page here, we get a wonderful table that completely describes all the different services, how many nodes they need, and what kind of configuration um, the uh, administrator for the customer uh, might want to consider. So these would be hardware configurations, for instance, 
And then if they're interested in cloud, they can look at GCP, uh, AWS, and Azure, and which kinds of uh, machine types or instance types would match the configurations listed here. Now you also note at the top, not only does it um, highlight that uh, it's a supported user base of about 5,000, it also mentions HA or high availability is true, and it talks about the test rates so that your customer can understand exactly uh, how we tested against this. And last but not least, you'll notice that most of the services have uh, footnotes. And if you scroll down, you can see the footnotes describe additional comments, uh, either recommendations or caveats about those particular um, items uh, that make sense for them. And that's basically it. As, as um, so let's, oh, uh, yeah. So uh, that's it for the reference architecture. Remember I talked about the um, performance tool. So we've got a really great blog here uh, written by one of, I believe the quality engineers, uh, Grant Young. And it talks about leveraging this performance tool. <clears throat> so, you know, one of the initiatives that we had was to test and improve the performance of GitLab. We needed a way to do this. And this is how we came up with the GitLab performance tool or, or GPT. Um, we run it and we use it extensively for the reference architecture. Um, these are, this is a little more about um, what it is, how we use it. Uh, how you can get it, meaning how the customer can get it. So the customer can actually download this and run it themselves on their own, on their own systems to either test out that what they currently have is good or the architecture they're going to put in place makes sense. There's a video here, which is really great to see how it's run. And then let's talk a little bit about the future, right? What's next? So clearly the quality team is always aiming at uh, making GitLab's performance the best in class. And um, so they are continuing to work on the um, test tool. Um, and uh, that includes uh, links here you can see to uh, the next few releases and what they're gonna add to expanding the test coverage um, and making sure that it's the best it can be. Okay. So in summary, this is how we answer the customer's question. We reviewed uh, the GitLab architecture, both the overall and the details. We identified the appropriate reference architecture, and I came up with a little acronym, HUG. So HA, user count, and GEO. Those are three things, you, the main three things you need to uh, capture from the customer so that you can decide which reference architecture makes the most sense to present to them. And then last but not least, we drilled down uh, to uh, view the specific configuration. I also wanted to show you that I included references here. Uh, so all the pages we talked about are on our website. We're big fans of uh, website first and single source. So everything I talked about is, is on the website uh, based on these uh, links. So I want to say thanks for um, attending this uh, sales level up session uh, for GitLab. I'm Ken McKnight.